Hello, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch Podcast. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I rarely do. I'm always surprised by the weird way I talk. Uh, with me, this is Matt, by the way. I'm Matt. I host this thing. With me are my fantastical co-hosts, uh, Liz Griffin Harper and Joe Bandicoot. Oh, wait, Bandicoots are real. They are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, for a second, I thought Bandicoots were fake. I'm, I apologize. They're not a mythical creature. Um, but I like Bandicoot, <laughs> so yeah, Joe gets to be a Bandicoot. Um, They're very cute. Yeah, except for Crash Bandicoot, who is not. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot uh, does not look like a Bandicoot. <laughs> Not even remotely. No. No, oh, he's he is not, no. He's he's like the set animal. He doesn't look like anything. Okay, look, um, I have to say this is a random aside because you just jogged my memory. I don't know what it is for. If you happen to be in the Western New York region or Buffalo and, and Rochester in particular, there is somebody who is a very big Crash Bandicoot super fan who has their Ford Escape wrapped completely in crash bandicoot art <laughs> i have driven by this person and behind this person many times in the last two months it is wild i never knew somebody could love a video game that much and it's like every version of crash bandicoot from all of the games plastered all over the vehicle like if by some miracle you're listening to this podcast you're awesome more power to you that's wild <laughs> Okay, um, Liz. Since Joe got to have that that Bandicoot related exchange, do you have anything? Mm, no. Okay, cool. Then we'll move on to doing our jobs. Uh, we usually open the show with various uh, news and events, so we're going to do that now because you know it's a thing we like to do. Um, right now, between today and tomorrow, a lot of stuff is happening in various Blizzard games. Um, if you go out five days. Pretty much, there's a huge amount of winter-related celebrations going on. Um, but before we talk about those, right now, um, in World of Warcraft, the LFR Wing 4 for Amir Sil is open as of today, as we're recording, which is the 12th. Um, if you are listening to us recorded, obviously it will not be the 12th anymore, but you know it'll still probably have opened within a week of when you hear this. And yeah, that's cool. Uh, LFR is now opened faster than it has ever opened before. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I think this whole thing took about, like, I want to say three weeks, maybe a month. A month. Um, uh, yeah, it was a month because they did have a two week delay between Wing Three and Wing Four. Yeah. But all the rest of them have come out weekly, and that's that's really great. It's great to have LFR open so quickly and yeah. be able to jump in here and see the story because there's a lot of story in a Mirror Cell. Yeah, and also for people who like to see the fights on LFR, and then you can at least, when you go to your, your group, you can be like, well, you know, I've seen it in LFR, and it's, of course, not going to be that easy, but, you know, hey, at least I know kind of what <laughs> well, the games are. Well, the jump from, like, LFR to normal isn't as pronounced, like, like there's really not a whole lot of mechanical differences, so you can get a rough idea of it. It's it's actually pretty usable as a training, like, ground for, or at least a exposure ground for Raiders, if your guild is going to step foot in the normal for the first time, mm -hmm. it's actually really nice. It's also an interesting it's way to increase your chance to get tier. Oh yeah, because mm -hmm. if you want to get your set yeah. bonus, you can you can use the LFR pieces. Go ahead, Liz. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I mean, the other thing is gear from LFR is actually pretty decent. So I, if you're trying to get ready to do normal, LFR is actually a viable way to do that. And that has not been the case in the past because LFR opens so far after normal and heroic. You couldn't just jump into LFR to help you get ready for normal because LFR wouldn't be open yet, or there would be one wing open with three bosses and you can only do that so much and get gear. Uh, but now all of LFR is open. You can dive into that and get ready to jump into your normals or heroics with pretty decent gear. It actually turns LFR into a practical stepping stone to the next tiers of rating, which makes a lot of sense. It makes so much sense that I don't know why we haven't done this before. I think it's I think that this works great. Yeah, I, I think I, we're all in agreement on that one. So, but yeah, that's happening this week. Also happening on the same day um in diablo 4 and and if you're watching me play you can see that i was doing some of it earlier um midwinter blight which is diablo 4's big midwinter event uh started today the 12th and it will be going until january i believe um liz do you know exactly uh, yes when? it it's either january 2nd or 3rd so it ends in early january yeah so it's basically looking at three weeks of it two to three weeks mm -hmm. 
Um, and and that's pretty cool. It's an interesting event so far. Um, it It's very grindy. I don't know if you guys like mm-hmm. going out and grinding stuff. I kind of do because it's Diablo and it just means murdering more stuff. And I'm, I'm totally down for that. But you have to go out and find the various mobs that drop uh, midwinter materials. And then you collect a whole bunch of those. And then you go to back to your town and you either turn them in for, for goodies or you can go to a table near the guy and you can trade them. And they will he will give you a different resource, and you can use that resource uh, to to buy stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, I haven't gotten anything yet because I just started. Uh, but and I will point out this character is now level fourteen. I just rolled this character oh, nice. today, so we have a character on the seasonal realm because I haven't gotten to play as much Diablo as I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But I want to see. Well, let's see what I can do. I got to level fourteen like in an hour and a half. Like it, it, it's faster now. Like I had said before, I didn't feel that much faster, but I, it does. It's faster now. Um, so I will say that. Go ahead, Liz. I, I think leveling in Diablo Four feels really good this season. I, I, I think we both had the complaint previously that it felt like a grind. You know, you yeah. hit kind mm-hmm. of a point, and it just comes to a grinding halt. I think it's been pretty good this season, and. Uh, as you can tell, it takes, you know, you put an hour in, you can get five, ten levels. It's it's great. It feels like you're always making progress. You're always getting new stuff. That's what's so fun about Diablo is going in, mm-hmm. murdering a bunch of stuff, and making all of your numbers go up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we will now segue to Diablo 2's uh, 22 Nights of Terror, which is their kind of holiday celebration that's actually starting tomorrow or the 13th mm. uh which again as we record it, it tomorrow may no longer be tomorrow by the time you hear this but yeah that's i think they did that one last year is what you told me i didn't remember it yeah. from last year last year last year was the first year we did midwinter blight uh and it's just uh, it's it's like a Nights random event first year we did Nights yeah. of Terror. oh sorry i there are too many events starting at the same time. There are just yep. it's too much. Um, it's it's kind of a random event in. Oh, I need to pull up the thing. <laughs> uh, um. So last year was the first year we had the twenty two nights of terror, and basically every twenty four hours there will be a new gameplay modifier that just. I mean, it's kind of like hitting the random button every day. There's going to be something new for the next 22 days of terror and uh, in in these specific terror zones. So it's it's it, it mixes up the game. So there's something new to do every time you log on for this midwinter. Uh, I'm about to do it again. 22 yeah. nights of terror. It's like have have. Have you noticed, Matt, when writing about Diablo, that it's like, I keep wanting to say Diablo 2 Season 4 instead of Diablo 4 Season 2? I make that mistake constantly. The one I make is like when you you brought up the other day that it was Diablo 3 uh, PTR for the uh, for Season 20, mm-hmm. I think, or something. It's Season 30. Season 30. See? there, there's your, That's the one I do all the time. Is I, I subtract seasons. <laughs> yes, because I just remembered we were in season nineteen. Like, no, man, that was like that was a year and a half ago. It's been a while. So yeah, it, uh, it happens to me often. The other thing that happens to me often is that I I I think stuff is happening in Diablo Four that that isn't that that didn't that that stuff that happened in Diablo Three but is not happening in Diablo Four. I think it is. I, I have that problem too. So yeah, I think the Diablo series as a whole kind of feels like one cohesive game sometimes. It's like it, it just, it's all it, pretty similar gameplay, man. It blurs together, particularly because you have all the games doing stuff at the same time. Diablo three is the odd one out here without a holiday event, but uh, season thirty is probably starting before the end of the month. They haven't released yeah. a date for it, but, but they just the did the PTR. Yeah, the PTR just shut down today as we're recording this. So, you know, that means we're going to have season 29 ending and season 30 beginning in the next couple of weeks, probably right after the holidays is my guess. Oh, yeah, I would expect it to be possibly in January um, mm, instead of December, either, just because there's so much yeah, going on in December already. Either like the very end of December or the beginning of January, but it's coming up pretty soon. We're halfway through December so already. I don't I don't know how this happened. We're halfway through the month of December. Um. Yeah, my birthday was last week, so I I, I blame that. 
It was my, it was my fault for being born. <laughs> hmm. I that I I don't think that tracks, but I I can't explain it myself. So but anyway, yeah, th- yeah. There's that. There's that holiday event happening in Diablo 2. World of Warcraft does still have Winter's Veil, however, and that's happening within four days. Uh, so that's that'll this... be Friday? This Tuesday today. Uh, so Wednesday, Thursday, that's Friday? That's Saturday. That's Saturday. Saturday. December 16th. Uh, Winter's Veil kicks off. And wow, there will be a new uh, dragon riding thing. It's like all of the holiday events. One of the things that I dislike about the rush of content we've had in WoW lately is the fact that everything has started to feel samey. So it's like, okay, every holiday event, you get a new dragon riding cosmetic, which maybe you really care about and maybe you don't care about at all. And it's it's like every event has this samishness about it. Am I Am I the only one feeling this? Uh, I mean, I think that's just uh, the nature of just that fast of content release. We we've talked about it with other other games and and things like that. Like there is a point where you potentially hit too much too soon, and mm-hmm. you wind up running into that where some people will feel very samey or it will feel very samey to them. And so, I had someone. Oh, go ahead, Joe. I was just gonna say. So it's it's a difficult balance, really. Mm. I had someone talking to me about this back when I was raiding more actively and he made the point that a lot of times what happens is as new content comes out, it's designed to give you similar things because they want you, they don't want you to suddenly not be able to do the thing you were doing, even though you Mm -hmm. won't be doing that thing, they'll give you something. So you ended up with like this new thing that you can go farm gear for, you know? And it's like, after a while, you're like just uh, all that other stuff is still there. You just gave me a new one, and it feels like it. Not, I didn't get anything because you, it's it's filling the same niche. It, so mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like a new thing, even though it is a new thing. With it, like, and then that's that's something I've been thinking about ever since. That there is a certain amount of there's got to be some catch up mechanic. There's got to be some you know open world thing. There's got to be some you know. And I remember when we were like, I think it was when the second raid came out mm-hmm. and I, and we everyone was talking about going down underground to do world quests and stuff. And it's like on the one hand, yay, new zones and stuff. But on the other hand, it was still basically a very similar world quest experience. Hmm. Um, there was stuff you could do that was different, but like the vault, that was the, the underground weird vaultness. That Secure was strange vault. and new. Yeah. Mm. And so there was new stuff, but it was, Sometimes it didn't always feel new. And, and I don't um, want to make it sound like we're ungrateful for it. We're not. No, like, it's no, a lot I, of work. It's just, it's just, just, sometimes it's just too much to, it, it can be yeah. a bit overwhelming. And as a result, yes, sh- go ahead. I should clarify the developers are doing amazing work getting out mm-hmm. content this fast oh, yeah. and of this quality level. But for me personally, it does feel a little fast and things come out before I have the chance to fully experience them. And it it feels like kind of I'm on an endless treadmill because there's so much content. Uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. very much the it's similar to the problem that Mr. Pandaria had, mm-hmm. except that Mr. Pandaria then decided to hit the brakes, and uh, we were inside yeah. the, the last raid for I don't remember how long, but over a year it felt like. It feels like now thinking about it, it was over a year. We were in. in I think it was. Yeah, it was. I know, but I don't know. I can't. I can't speak to it right this second and, and be sure of accuracy. So I'm, I'm saying that it's how it felt. Um, so the new, the new dragon riding armor you can buy for winter's veil this year. It is for the Highland Drake and it gives it reindeer horns and a red nose and uh, a, like a bag of toys on its back. And I, I think I may need this armor. It also appears to have like a wreath on its chest. I just, if I still want is- the dragon to have the ability to say this isn't dignified. <laughs> like you feel uh, like the I dragon mean, should get to say something along those lines of look yeah. uh, we made a deal i'd ride you around on my back i, I get it but this yeah uh, seriously what and is it, this it it has like red ribbons around its face and a red nose and it's frankly pretty incredible i mean, if you're into that aesthetic uh i remember last year for winter's veil they gave Razagath like a little wreath that she held and a candy cane and a very tiny hat. She held in her tiny little arms. Yes, and a tiny Santa hat. I I cannot wait to see if they do the same in Amirdrasil. 
Yeah, but I mean, if Fy Fyrak was holding a wreath, I mean, it would burn up, right? That doesn't really work the same way, but I'm, I want to find out. I'm we just demand, we demand he'll be tiny carrying fire a giant wreaths. Yule log. No, he'll be carrying a giant Yule log around and it will be slowly burning. They'll replace his axe with a giant log. <laughs> oh. But now you made me think of that. Yeah, nobody moved during Flame Wreath whilst the raid blows up. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so that's that's wow. Uh, we're getting Winter's Veil. And then finally, in terms of holiday events, there's the Overwatch Winter Wonderland, which is taking place three days after Winter Veil for WoW on the 19th. And I guess that means that would be next Tuesday. Because uh, mm -hmm. today's, today's the 12th, so it's next week on this, the 19th. And and I mean, I, I don't play Overwatch at the moment, so I'm not really up on what their Winter Wonderland is. But I know it tends to be new skins and you know such and mm. so forth. So I'm assuming it'll be something along those lines. Uh, if either of you has played it more, like Joe, I think you've the one who's played it most of the three of us. Yeah, I have. Uh, I haven't popped back in since the new season started. Um, but I am probably going to start popping in for the holiday event with my local gaming uh, guild. I guess I want to call them. They're not really a guild, but it's my mm -hmm. local gaming group. Um, we tend to run in cycles and it usually tends to be around holidays. So we're about due to, for another, another batch of overwatch runs. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, new skins, you know how that works. Um, I also wanted to mention, cause I didn't even know that this had happened. Uh, Warcraft rumble season two has started. Is that yeah, correct? It, started, it kicked off next week or last week it kicked, it kicked off, off next week, week then i came back in time to tell yeah. you about it mm. oh god oh, Liz, don't man. do this to me i can it's, barely keep track of time as it is it's it's been a tough year you know it's just been a tough year keeping all of this keeping all of this straight it's it's very difficult yes but yeah so that's happened um, uh and so we'll get more of that um it, season of discovery phase two is coming sooner or later uh, uh yeah. go ahead I, not exactly soon. It's a, it's another one that's probably going to come early next year. Uh, because Blizzard talked about having about shorter phases than they did in, you know, traditional classic. Uh, about two months is what they appear to be aiming for. Obviously, we haven't gotten any official news. But, well, classic Season of Discovery, they don't call them phases in Season of Discovery. They call them level bands because they're breaking up content into levels. Right now we have a level 25 level cap. But uh, in the next phase, you're going to have a level 40 level cap. And your exciting new raid is going to be Nomragon. Uh, we have no information about how they're changing up Nomragon to be a raid. But uh, it's another one. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Uh, the season of discovery is planned to be split into four phases. The next level cap is 40 after that 50 after that 60. So we're kind of, we're, we're playing in little, in little bunches. Uh, I should point out that one of the reasons that we're, that we're pretty relatively sure that they're going to be doing, uh, the next, whatever you call it, level, next level band sooner rather than later. Yeah is that they've been doing a lot of balance patches. Uh, they just mm -hmm. did a balance patch that went live today as we're recording. And they're talking about doing more soon. Like they, they've even said, we're, we've got more changes coming for the Hunter. We just haven't decided what they're going to be yet. Um, so they have been doing balances and they're going to be doing more of them. It feels like Season of Discovery is going to just ex going to be accelerated from the beginning to the end anyway. I'm actually curious mm -hmm. to see what the level 50 uh, raid is. Yeah, they've actually, you know, in other WoW Classic releases, you know, we got the original Classic, Burning Crusade, Wrath of Lich King. They all came out with really clear information about each phase in advance. Like, this phase is going to have this raid. This phase is going to have this raid. Season of Discovery has not done that. Not at all. They've they've only told us Nomergon next phase and they listed the level caps, but they didn't even they didn't quite announce the level caps. That was just kind of a little aside in a video they put out about it. So it's we have very little information about what's coming next. We can only speculate. There will probably be new runes coming in the next phases. Right now you can only equip three runes on three armor slots, and of course you have a few more armor slots than that. So we're going to be getting new runes, but we don't know what or which armor slots. Uh, it, there's a lot of mystery. And that's, 
That's kind I mean, of the point. It's yeah. the season of discovery. That's the thing about it is they're trying to yeah. give people things to explore. It's exciting. To uh, should also mention there's a revival catalyst as of today in World of Warcraft. If you've wait, been waiting to do the revival catalyst to get your gear, um, you know, to get tier or get you know do better, that's that's this week. I believe it's like mm-hmm. I, it should have happened today. It's yeah, it's, as it, of, is, as... it is now live. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, I wanted to mention this because I was I, I noticed it when I was um, mm-hmm. putting together the notes that Liz had left behind and looking for something else to mention. Um, they've been doing a ton of data mining for uh, the trading post for the future. And one of the things they have found, for example, was there's a sword that looks like Varian's sword um, that you can get a great sword version of. Uh, and it's been, in, it's been linked to trading posts now. So we know it's going to be coming in some future trading post, but there is a ton of stuff that they have, they've got data mined out. Um, this is from Wowhead. I've seen it also done by other sites like uh, MMO Champion was doing some. There's a really wide variety of stuff. Um, there's, well, for instance, there's an axe that looks like a flower. <laughs> Uh, various spring I mean, why items. Not? Why not? Well, it looks pretty cool. In point of fact, the paradise uh, golden axe. There's the lavish floral edge. The mm-hmm. uh, sunny bow bouquet. bouquet. Uh, instead of bouquet, <laughs> it's, it's a sunny bouquet. Um, <laughs> lavish floral stalk. The sunny floral staff. And then there's the ensemble spring revelers lavender apparel and the ensemble spring revelers lavender collection. I don't know the difference. They both look to be the same thing. But I think one's <laughs> possibly you, for a girl. I don't know. Have Have you been to the trading post this month to connect, collect the candy cane sword yet? No, uh, I went in like last week. I went in and got something. I didn't get the candy cane sword. No, I still have to go to the because trading that- post and pick up my stuff for this month. I forgot to do that. <laughs> Yeah, you got to go do that because, okay, well, I don't I don't know if you use swords, Joe. Unfortunately, sword. yeah, unfortunately, shaman. shaman are not allowed to use one-handed swords, despite it being one mm. of the most common things uh, that most people were able to wield in all of mm. history. Blizzard. Sorry, please. Well, continue. You know, most people actually use spears and we don't get those. So hmm. like spears should so- be a one-handed weapon, not a pole arm, like the actual it's- one-handed spear. That's the, hmm. the classical weapon of war throughout history, and you, there are none in World of Warcraft. This is, I can state unequivocally, the best transmog in World of Warcraft. It is a sharpened candy cane that you stab people with. It's amazing. The only problem I have with it is the difficulty of matching candy cane red with the rest of my armor. He's got to embrace the full clown suit. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, or you just have to embrace the fact that no two shades of red in this game quite match, and, uh... No, no, be... oh my god, yeah, you know what else worse? Hmm. Yellow or golden colors. Gold is terrible, Wait, can oh we... my gosh. Gold, oh. the gold is awful, because, like, there's, like, eight million different shades of gold. Yes. Can we, can we, so can close. We... Can we all can we all agree that the one of the next features in, in one of, in the next expansion should be dyeing your armor? <laughs> I don't even know if it needs yes. an actual armor dyeing system so much as it has a can this be made to match like button mm. where like you you pick match everything to this <laughs> um, because I mean I'm looking yeah. at this right now they've they've put in other things they put in the training post are weapons from previous expansions like mm. there's yeah. that bow from the Nexus. That now has a green fell version. Um, there's a fist weapon from Ice Crown Citadel, which now comes in a ghostly blue, which looks really nice. Mm-hmm. There's the mace from um, the Warlords of Draenor final raid, the Hellfire Citadel raid. Um, mm-hmm. Slightly different coloration, looks really nice. There's an astonishingly nice crystal two-handed axe that I don't recall ever seeing before. Like this is a, a model I have not seen. I just I do not know what it is. I don't know where it comes from. Um, but the the one of the others is a blue version of of Cataclysm's Edge. Uh, it's called Catastrophe's Edge, and it's I think I have it for it's the LFR model, um, mm. and it's really nice. So you know, but th- I'll tell you right now, from my experience with the other versions of this sword, they don't match anything. 
<laughs> they don't match anything. See, I wasn't just bringing this up to be a weirdo. Um, they just their color is just so slightly off to everything you try to match them with. The only thing I could get them to match with was a set of greens that dropped in Legion that has a very a fairly dreadlord look. But it's it's just green random quest armor that you find on the beach. It just happens to be a complete set. It's I think it's like the Moonfire set or something. And it's mm. Zoroth. It's the Zorothian set. That's what it's called. And it's the only thing that I could get to match that sword. Everything else was either slightly more golden or slightly less <laughs> golden or didn't have a yellow fire aura that matched it or what have you. Mm. It's just so hard. And Paladin armor, I'm going to say this right now. Paladin armor is the hardest to match with anything but other pieces of that set of mm -hmm. anything. It's always a slightly different gold color. <laughs> oh my Lord. <sighs> I, just, I'm going to try to get my breath back while you guys. And it's like the, the blood elf heritage armor. It has this really particular shade of bright yellow gold. And it's like, you can't mix and match that stuff. There's so many pieces of armor that it seems like, oh, this would be really cool to put together in a unique new combination. No, because these shades of gold are slightly off and they will make me personally a little crazy. Yeah, it, it's like, um, I used to have a set. That, there's a piece that, you, there's a set you can get for signing up for Shadowlands. Back uh -huh. in the day, it was like this, kind of odd vaguely off gold set that had included like mm -hmm. a like a very long flowing dress type chest plate but very mm -hmm. large clunky gloves and boots and the gloves okay. and boot the gloves and boots are a kind of gold color that contains three different gold hues <laughs> so it can kind of match with with multiple different gold pieces they were a godsend because i would use them in everything because they matched just enough that i wouldn't have a stroke Cause you know, you know, like when you're, when you're like looking at your pieces that you've put together for a set mm -hmm. and it's like, this set's got green in it, but it's a different kind of green mm -hmm. and I can mm -hmm. see it. And I'd see it every time I'd log in, I'd be like, I can't wear those, those gloves with that, with the chest plate. It just doesn't work. They're, they're not the right color. Oh, so I think maybe Joe's right. Or maybe they just need to send me Valium every time they put on a new set of armor. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know which, I don't know which would be cheaper for them. It's like the Kyrian sets from Shadowlands, all of the Shadowlands sets, but the Kyrian plate sets have like a particular shade of gold that's kind of pale, and the silver coloration is a particular shade of silver, and there's like a dark purplish color that's, it's, these do not match anything but themselves. And I, I like to do the mixing and matching to make different weird combinations, and it's it's hard with some of these things, which have yeah. completely unique colors. Which is weird yeah. because it's not like Blizzard can't do it. Because Blizzard did mm -hmm. it for like the Ulduar Warrior sets. They're mm -hmm. different colors, but they can actually go together. Like you can put the the blue pieces and the green pieces together, and since it's like a, it's an accent color, like the main bronzish color of the piece is still there. So they they are just these accent colors, and they can work together. Like you can have them there and they work together, but so many pieces just don't like it just, this, this thing will only work with the set it was part of. And it's just, it's mind blowing to me how, how irritating that is. Like, ah, I, in other words, Blizzard, you've made a, th a thing I love so much that I, I've started. I mean, to I it. imagine it's probably not irritating. I imagine it's probably not irritating to everyone, but it does. Well, I it assume most people really don't even, most people don't even notice it. And it's quite. It's I quite like absolutely me. do. There's a. I'm late yeah. to raid half the time because I'm fixing my uh my my transmog because I got to get it to match. It's like I've been trying to get a new transmog set up, and it's like you know it'll be before raid, and I'm sitting online, and I'm like switching and switching, and it's like no, that doesn't quite match. That doesn't quite match. Oh, let me try doing this, and then and then I wind up going to raid in the same old transmog because I just couldn't find the perfect new look, even though I I really do need. I need to shake it up. I need a new look for a new uh, raid. I will say this um, for a long time. I, and this is something that happened a lot when, especially when I was playing my male characters, mm. I have a lot of transmogs that are bare chested and often don't even have like, they don't have anything but pants and people are like, what's the deal with this transmog? I'm like, I couldn't get anything to match. <laughs> so that's why he's half naked. He's half naked it, because I couldn't get anything to match. And I can't do that has, on my female characters because 
They look weird mm -hmm. with their underwear out. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It has been great to just be able to turn off a lot of armor pieces. And yes. I also think the new the new tabards you can get in Shadowlands and in Dragonflight. Those are have, awesome. They're pretty amazing and they have some unique patterns and they just have some really good looks that can go with a lot of different transmogs. And a lot of the time I've put together a transmog and it's only worked because I've put on a tabard over it that yeah. ties it together and hides, you know, a tiny bit of the mismatched chest piece. A good tabard like hides a lot, hearing, of, a lot of fashion crimes is what I'm I'm hearing. just hearing in, in, in my head now for <laughs> Big Lebowski. That tabard really tied the look together. You, you know what I... It does. It does. Speaking of turning things off on Transmog, one thing I was kind of... I was thinking about this yesterday uh, when I, I was messing around with the Transmog for my Hunter. I'm actually really surprised because we can do the independent shoulder Transmogs. I'm mm -hmm. surprised it hasn't extended down to gloves yet. Because, like, that would be a really neat thing for, like, ranged classes to have, like, oh, the... Oh, yeah. I like it. Because I was just thinking about that because I'm sitting there with I'm sitting there with this. I'm like, wow, you know, I would have an archer's van brace, but the other hand would be completely empty. Like, mm -hmm. I wish I could do that. I was just thinking uh, of that. So, I don't know. I don't know that it'll ever happen, but it would be really cool if they did. One of my favorite new transmogs is the Trading Post has had these, like, opera gloves, mm -hmm. which go up all the way to your character's shoulder. So you could put on, like, a chest piece and put on the opera gloves in whatever color you like, and you're totally covering up your arms and just making it that solid color. And that, I have created some really neat looks with that. I like these opera gloves so much. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, Blizzard, give me some more color options for opera gloves. They're awesome. And y you just have to put out the same look in the trading post, but give it a different color. I'd be super happy. Thanks! Thanks. I, I love how chipper Liz is when, she, when she's asking the question. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, me too. That's what I was saying. <laughs> But um, I think at this point, oh, go ahead, Liz. Sorry. Transmog makes me happy. I think Transmog makes all of us I happy. I would agree. So yeah. Transmog, it's Please. the cause of and the solution to all of my problems. <laughs> that is that is sad, but true. Sad, but true. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, at this point, though, I think we're going to move on and, and do some questions because we've got a little bit less than half an hour and we've got a, a fair chunk of questions this week. Um. If you've got a question for the show, uh, please send it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject lines podcast or Blizzard Watch. Um, that's for the email. If you'd rather use our Discord, we have two servers for Discord. One is for our patrons, which, by the way... Channels, uh, not, not servers. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Discord channels, my apologies. Uh, one is for our patrons. And by the way, thank you for everybody who signed up recently during our our, our pledge drive. for You to MVPs. Word. Uh, you can either use our the patron channel, which is the patron Q and podcast questions channel, or if you're not a patron, uh, we still love you. You're still our, our friends. Uh, you can use the non patron simple Q and podcast questions channel. And either way, you can get us questions and we will answer them. This week was mostly emails, though. Um, we got a lot of emails and they said stuff like for either podcast. So it was like, OK, yoink. Um, <laughs> if, if you say for either podcast, I will likely yoink them. Because Joe usually has to look at it later in the week than me, so uh, and I am sneaky. Anyway, um, first question, however, is not really a question so much; it was just a response. But I wanted to put it in here because, I mean, it just felt like a nice thing to do. Um, hello, Blizzard Watch. After your recent episode discussing the dearth of WoW Machinima, I felt it necessary to share my Machinima series, which tells the story of <laughs> Warcraft Three. Uh, us machinima makers are still out there. You can check it out on my YouTube channel, Saving the Wow, and uh, he links it there. We ha I have not gotten to see it yet, but I still thought it was worth. You know, I felt I don't want people to think we're saying there's no machinima left or machinima is dead. That that wasn't what we were getting at. We were just pointing out that it used to be a much. It used to be something that was new, and Wow was one of the places where you saw a lot of it, and it was very big. That was all we were going for. Um, it used to be a lot easier to find with like machinima.com mm -hmm. and you know in YouTube it gets lost frankly because there's so much on YouTube and I know at least for me the videos that kind of filter to the top are usually 
Uh, you know, people talking about the game, not people making content like that. So, yeah, the algorithm yeah. is weird to deal with. Yeah, certainly we see every year at BlizzCon, every year there is a BlizzCon, we see really cool machinima uh, presented as part of the part of the machinima contest. We saw some great ones this past year, but it just doesn't feel like it has such a dominant presence, and it's a lot harder to find. Yeah, very much so. Um, mm-hmm. The algorithm is not just. It, we we could do an entire show just about the algorithm of of social media and how it affects mm-hmm. these kind of things, but not really our wheelhouse. Um, but regardless, yeah, it it doesn't mean like one thing I've noticed is that a lot of times if I watch one video, I'll get mm-hmm. a lot of different videos on that same topic, and they will completely wash out. Uh, anything else until I start going to look for other things myself. The algorithm yeah. is, is I, I don't like the algorithm. We are not friends algorithm. I, I made the mistake maybe of, I set up the televisions in the house with my YouTube account so that they would just, so people could actually log on, mm. turn on the television and watch this stuff. And now you see where this yeah. is going. Yeah. Cause you see where this is going. Yeah. Uh, my I, wife is the I, only one in our house who has the YouTube with the no ads. Uh-huh. So hers yeah. is set up on my Xbox, and yeah, uh-huh. she's got a lot of stuff about like dinosaurs that she didn't really need to see. Yeah, it's like uh, someone was watching football videos on YouTube, and it's like, yeah, I'm never going to get away from this. I never, never again. It's going to be football recommendations. Yeah, so... you're going to be like, what? Who? What? Do you... <laughs> yeah, YouTube <laughs> thinks YouTube's algorithm thinks you are some kind of strange polymath who's into all this weird different stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happened to my to my wife. That she, it's, you know, her YouTube thinks she is like really, really interested in the Permian. It's it's very interesting because you can go into like your watched history and like delete videos from it. And I went back and I deleted all the football, and it's still recommending me football. And I'm like, I don't even, I don't know what this is. It's there's someone throwing a ball. What's going on? Is this wait, a wait a minute. Game there's no ball. ball. It's just some weird egg. I don't get it. <laughs> ah, the algorithm. Yeah. But regardless, mm. so that was from, I, I'm going to say from Saving the Wow because he didn't actually get use a name. But the next question uh, is, this one's from Maxia Blastrig. Um, and hello, Blizzard Watchers. Yeah, I, I thought so. Um, I've got a question about a moment in WoW player history I missed but wish I hadn't. The trade princess movement. What's the story and why don't we have a trade princess already? Who are the best candidates? What non-goblin societies need a trade princess of their own? Uh, sincerely, Maxia Blastrig. Um, either you want to jump on this one? Uh, I'll, let's I talk had, about... Oh, wait, you don't know about this? I had never heard of this until I read this question <laughs> this afternoon. Did you go down the, did you go down the, uh, the Google uh, rabbit hole for this one? I, I have not, because I figured one of you two would know more about it than I could ever Google and tell me. That's what Certainly. I'm hoping for. Uh, so there was a there was a uh, a entirely fan driven movement uh, when goblins were sort of introduced, and we started learning more about the uh, trade princes and everything else that was going on with that. Uh, that was basically uh, players asking for a female trade prince for the Bilgewater Cartel. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, because they were added in Cataclysm, that's when the, we they started with this. Uh, it started with a thread on the forums. Uh, and it was, uh, by the player, I want to say it was like Sarpa, uh, it was originally inspired by the forum's moderator, which was Freya, uh, who had shown some support for the idea and it really started to like pick up. Uh, and it was one of the longest lived threads in the cataclysm for forums that like, <laughs> like almost had 400 pages. Um, there's a Facebook group for it. There was an RP guild for it. Um, <laughs> They were, they would RP trying to overthrow trade prince Gallywix. Uh, and I think it was, it, it, yeah, it was, it was f- fantastic. Like it was absolutely fantastic. Um, the movement culminated with, uh, the creation of NPC boss Mida, uh, also called her tallness, <laughs> uh, which was basically that in the game was, uh, Im- implementing of the trade princess in the game, uh, which is basically a lays onto the war chief, but is uh, a nod in game to that player movement. Absolutely fantastic. And yes, Matt has been posting pictures as we've been, as I've been talking about it. Uh, one of my favorite things that I do love about it is the, we can do it with the goblin art 
which was absolutely fantastic. But yeah, it was it was one of those one of those organically springing forward player moments that sort of make the game magical that we've been talking about. Um, and but I it, love it. But it was one of those things that was really easy to miss unless you're on the forums. And let's be honest, forums during Cataclysm time, even now they're not great, but they were bad. <laughs> Moderators yeah. had their hands even more full back then. Um, so a lot of people just didn't get the chance to see it. And it, some of the, the new sites, I think we even posted something about it at the time way back when. Um but like, yeah, it was super easy to miss, but it was super, super cool. And yes, I will always, I will stand a trade princess because I don't like Gallowix. Yeah, that's it. Doesn't Gallowix like the bad guy now? Like he's, he's super bad guy. He's fought the mm-hmm, horde like twice. Mm-hmm. And he's currently mm-hmm. loose somewhere in the world. Yeah. And technically yeah. Gazlo is not necessarily the trade prince. He's sort of like the trade site boss. Like the, yeah. Yeah. And if there's if there's a trade prince, is there a trade king and queen somewhere? It's it's, it's more the like the hierarchy it's, here is very confusing. It's more like the Renaissance where you well, like Italy was full of princes and those princes were didn't actually have a king directly over them until the Holy Roman Empire finally conquered Italy. So yeah, it's one of those situations. Uh, every f- every jumped up trade guy is calling himself a prince. Well, there there is actually a wow precedent for it as well, which I mean, I'm not going to get too far into it because this is not lore watch and I don't want to bore Liz. Um, <laughs> but it, the trade princes were the rulers of the goblin uh, society that had their own private armies. And I believe that there was usually five of them. And you could, if you massed enough wealth you could become a trade prince but it essentially was you amassed wealth you amassed an army and you were essentially recognized as one of the rulers or the princes because they didn't want to mess with you because it would have been bad for business at that point to do uh and they controlled the trade coalition of all of the the goblins or at least did um so yeah there you go the the short version All right, shall we move on? Oh, no, you guys didn't answer. Oh. Uh, what non-goblin societies need a trade princess of their own? All of them. I would argue, in fact, that none of them, because I want to limit capitalism as much as possible. <laughs> the last thing we need is more capitalist icons. Let's have some I mean, non-trade princesses. Let's just have princesses. No, see why no, no, no. Trade we, 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 we should have strong businesswomen of all factions available in trade. <laughs> I, I this is a hill I will die on. When the I, when the revolution comes and we get rid of capitalism, I will I'll escort you up the hill. I want capitalism gone. I want it gone from my games. I want it gone from everything. Although at least in like, games I can cheat and get money. You know what I mean? Like I feel like in real life I, I there's no way for me to amass a million gold, whereas in a game listen, I, I have room. I have way more money in game than I will ever have in real life. I want to live that fantasy, Matt. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. I'm like, I I need to start recrafting some gear. And do I even do I have the funds for this? Because I I'm broke in real life, but I'm somehow also broke in the video game. And it's, oh wow. Um, back to the question. I was thinking about this, and I was like, my first thought was gnomes because you have gnomes and goblins yes. kind of pair oh, off. Yeah. And then I started thinking, I started thinking, what would a what would a gnome trade princess be like? And I'm like, a gnome would just get so distracted with, like, building something or doing their thing, they would forget about the trade part. They would just be... Because gnomes are usually presented as very creative, very eccentric, often very hardworking, but I don't know that they have... I don't know that they all necessarily have the practicality to become trade princesses. All right. I'm sorry. I'm currently trying to find. There's a gnome NPC in Gadget Zan after Cataclysm, and uh-huh. she she would work pretty well as a trade princess if you were going to have one. But I can't remember her name. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't remember her name. She's she's a big time quest giver in the area. Like half the quest start she gives you. There are certainly there's certainly the odd ones out here and there who could fill that title, but it's hard to think. Goblins are such, uh, they're so focused on, on the trade thing. They're so focused on making money that, 
you know, it's hard to imagine that same level of focus in other cultures because it's just, uh, it's not quite there. But, mm, I, mean, I mean, maybe everyone should have a trade princess. I mean, that, and that's it's just, just Joe's argument, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just that one person of the race that is like, okay, cool, I'm going to handle business here because someone's got to do it because all of you other gnomes are busy blowing yourselves up and someone has oh, to we, somebody has trade. To, yeah, exactly. Somebody has to source the materials so, that you're going to keep blowing yourselves up with. Uh, I guess exactly. this is my job now. And someone has to have the brains to do that sort of stuff. So, yeah, maybe every culture, every Elsie Steel Spark trade princess. It's Kelsey Steel Spark. That's the gnome. Ah, I was thinking of. yes, yes. I went and looked her up. Was, <laughs> yeah, she was a gnome, ro- or gnome rogue, a agent and key member of the Gnome Ragon Covert Ops. So yeah, she also she's a military person, and she's wearing um, she's wearing the, the plate armor from the first season of Arena PvP from from uh, the Burning Crusade. It's the warrior set, so she's a warrior apparently. Um, it says rogue under her class, but that's a that's a warrior set she's wearing, so that's interesting. It's it's that's the beauty of transmog. Yep. Well, although they and won't let us actually do that yet, no, they I mean, should NPCs, though. NPCs don't have to play by the rules, though. That's the whole thing. Maybe maybe trade princesses don't have to play by the rules either. Well, they have to play by different rules, I would assume. Mm, they trade- have to set. They can set their own fashion standards. Yes, one would assume. This is reminding me of of playing. If you ever play Mario Party. Uh, and people play Princess Peach, and it's always like, this is your house, it's your party, we know you're cheating. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That has nothing to do with anything, but I wanted to mention Mario Party. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay, next question is from our friend Easy Target. You guys all remember Easy Target. Um, what does God need with a starship? Or more accurately, what game did slash does player starships the best? I was fond of Starfleet Command, a worthy interpretation of Starfleet Battles, but it was still a lot of abstract. We can leave the rabbit hole of EVE Online out of it for the purposes of this question. I'm out of it then. Uh, (laughs) Someone made a six-hour video about that game recently. Um, Go ahead and talk about, about EVE if you want to, Joe. I mean, I honestly think Eve has one of the best. Uh, Eve Online has some of the best, like spaceship. I, I guess I call it spaceship economies that has existed because the game revolves very heavily around it. It's it's creating star starcrafts that are very specifically tailored for what you're doing in the game. Whether you're you know going out and trying to fight versus whether you are uh, going out and just mining resources, like. I spent a long time getting a vessel that was essentially the equivalent of like a spell jam or whale ship. It didn't really have a whole lot of like living space or anything like that, but it had tons of cargo space. And the only weapons it really had on it was like a line of missiles from the top of it. And the only reason I had that is so that like when I'm mining ice, I could put my ship completely flat against the the plane of ice and fire the missiles off, making it really, really hard to, to come at me. Um, but I was able to do that. I was able to basically put a ship together that could do exactly what I needed to do. There's a lot of really cool stuff with it. So I, I it's a rabbit hole. Uh, Easy Target mm-hmm. is absolutely correct. Uh, but if it, it, it's it's something that is I, near and dear to my heart, because I definitely used to play a lot of spreadsheets in space to the part where I would be raiding on one screen and then having that running on the other one uh, because I needed to get ice to the relevant parties. Anyway, uh, yeah, well, you've you I'll turn it over to you. You guys, you guys have done a lot of sci fi games. What do you think? Liz, you got anything? I really don't. I mean, I think there are lots of games that have had really iconic ships you know obviously where the ship itself is kind of a real key part of the game you had i mean mass effect with the normandy that becomes you know it's you don't control the normandy the normandy is just kind of they're doing its thing it's kind of like your home base in that way you know ships are kind of like a form of player housing but very few games Well, I want to say very few games, very few games that I play because I'm big into single player RPGs really do the thing where you can customize your ship and make it your own. But you get these ships that kind of feel like they're your home base. They're kind of characters in the game because they're so central. Um, Honestly, 
I haven't played it, but Starfield feels like it's kind of nailing the modern spaceship game. Matt? Yeah, um, I was actually deliberately trying not to mention it because I've talked about Starfield a lot. But mm. Starfield does... It, it pulls the scope in from Eve. Eve is much, much... Like Joe said, you know, it is a rabbit hole. Uh, Starfield pulls it in. Like, one of the things is you don't build ships bigger than 80... Uh, mm. meters that's the 80 meters length is the it's the ca- it's the cap on how big your personal spaceship can be within that limit though spaceships in in starfield are entirely modular and you can design one to be a, a cargo ship and you can do cargo missions there are cargo missions in the game so you can totally be a cargo runner um or you could be you could build a combat ship to go out and hunt pirates or to be a pirate if you want to do piracy stuff you absolutely can um so th- there's a lot of elements like you can make a fighter, you could make a all-purpose craft that kind of is okay at everything. Um, you could make a dedicated um, cargo, dedicated you know cruiser, dedicated this, dedicated that. A lot of different things you can do, and it is since the game s- is modular, and because different planets have access to different modules because of certain companies. Like one of the conceits of the game I loved was that there's the original ships were built. When, when Earth was first evacuated by a company uh, called like like Nova Nova Industries or something. And they ran out of business a hundred years ago. But since all of their modules were built to be, you know, really rugged because these, they were building escape ships to get away from the dying Earth, they built all their modules to be like, you know, open and really easy to customize and really easy to repair. Whereas modern ship builders build their modules like black boxes. That if, it, if it's something starts to happen to it, you need to go buy a new module. So because of that, Nova Galactic stuff is still in use a hundred years after they shut down because it's so easy to replicate and so easy to repair that people are Hmm. basically still using those modules and just fix them whenever anything happens. And there's even one place left that you can get the modules new because they bought so many of them. The the (laughs) moon of Titan has so much Nova galactic backstock that they've started selling it to people because they like, you know, they could use it for another thousand years and they wouldn't run out. They have like just so much of it and the things like that there's there's like planets that sell spe- special piracy stuff like smuggling gear like there's there's cargo spaces that are shielded so that if someone tries to scan them they won't detect contraband in them and you can put uh, jam- jammers on your ship to keep the scans from reading what's in your cargo bay and you have to go to one planet or join one faction to get access to those so there's a lot of interesting stuff that changes the parameters of what you're doing. And then there's some modules that are just there for design. Like, like one company called Tayo, it's a subsidiary of the biggest uh, megacorp in, in the setting, um, which is, uh, I want to say Raikou, but I can't remember if that's the name. But that company makes luxury modules. So they're not better than like any other modules you'd get from other, com- other companies, but they're twice as expensive. And they look different. They have a very specific look. If you want your ship to look a certain way, they even have specific modules that do or don't have external access points so that you can put all the ones that don't have external access points around the outside of your ship to give your ship a smooth, sleek appearance. Mm. As Whereas other module ships don't have a smooth, sleek appearance because they have all this, they have to have all these ports to be modular. Like, you know, we want this to be a module we plug into the ship so you can put it wherever you want, but it's going to be obvious that that's what it is. And then there's other stuff. It, it is, it's a fascinating system. It certainly isn't as deep or broad as Eve, but it's still pretty deep and broad for a single player game. I did, however, want to do something because when Liz was talking about it, I started thinking of the ships that have been the ships that mm-hmm. I've considered my home base or whatever, and and which ones have been customizable, and which ones haven't been. I think for me, the number one ship from a Bioware game that deserves to be remembered isn't the Normandy, although the Normandy is good. Mm. It's the Ebon Hawk from Star mm. Star Wars, yeah, uh, Knights yeah. of the Old Republic, I and would, Old yeah. Republic Two. The Ebon Hawk is it is the it's the prototype of the home ship that goes to other planets and you do quests mm-hmm. and stuff. 
And it also is a little customizable. Like you can actually put stuff in it and decide, okay, I'm going to have this lab here, especially that's the second one, mind you, but you, you can actually customize the insides to a degree. And that I liked about it. Um, then there's star Wars, the old Republic MMO, which it, depending on the class, but every class seemed to have their own spaceship. Yep. They did. The mm. one that I remember for the Jedi was particularly weird and distinctive. Uh, the, the one for the Republic trooper, uh, which I, I played, I liked that one a lot. The bounty hunter one was, was I Gonzo. loved that one. Yeah. The bounty hunter one was straight up Gonzo. It was a fun, fun ship. And the Sith interceptor was a nice ship. Um, I did play Sith. I, I, I usually don't play the bad guys, but the Sith had their own appeal. Mm. And I, and I did like playing the Sith and their ship was, was fun. So I thought that that was a good thing that I, I wished other games had picked up on. In a lot of ways, the old Republic uh, did the whole really good single player game as an MMO thing before like final fantasy did mm -hmm. and did it better in my opinion. But that's, everyone has their own opinion. Everyone likes things differently, but I like, I thought that stuff like having your own ship really made the old mm. Republic feel distinctive and new. Um, other otherwise though i mean yeah i honestly don't i don't i have not played a star trek game yet that i've actually liked enough to mm -hmm. really get too deep into the thing i did actually play the one he mentions uh that was a long time ago starfleet command starfleet command was like i think late 90s <laughs> you know oh, you around know the time fallout came out so you know what also but, had a really good like system uh, 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 at least a good combat system for it too star trek online yeah. Okay. Like, See, that's fair. I did play Star Trek online. Yeah. I played, yeah. I played a right. heck of a heck of a lot of that. And I've and like you mentioned the well, an easy target mentions it, but then you bring it back up, and it's like, yeah, I forgot how good that actually was. It's it's interesting because it almost felt like your character class. It really did. Your ship was like your class because you you flew the ship out, and then sometimes you'd do landings and boarding missions and so forth, and then you'd be on your you know your your captain character or whatever. But a lot of the time, it was actually just you and your ship doing stuff in space. Yeah, yeah, and your crew was less your crew and more like you know your your specialization, for lack of a better word. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I remember flying around on my science vessels and loving it. Yeah, I, I had remember I spent a lot of time and effort getting the galaxy class. Yeah. Yeah, then, that was a, that was a thing. That was a whole thing to get. Yeah, and then mm. I got that, but then I got the special, um, the one named after the admiral from Deep Space Nine, Admiral Ross. There was a Ross class. Yep, that was the one where it's like this galaxy class. But after that one galaxy class got wrecked by the Dominion, they started putting guns on the things. So <laughs> it was like a galaxy class with ten times the firepower. Yeah, I think that was, was I think, think that was a tier six ship or something like that. It, looked, yeah, it, it was, was super super high up there. Yeah, it was very hard to get. And then after I did that, I lost interest because it was so much work. But yeah, it was a, it's not, not a bad system. He's right. He's totally I, right about that. I remember the the one that I sorry, and I just remember this because I had the I had a flame bard, a science dreadnought warbird at one point too in that game, and that was crazy. Uh, sorry, it was such a cool design. I I missed that game. I should see if my account's still good. <sighs> Anyway, however, um, that's three questions, and we are basically out of time. How did um, that happen? This yeah, time thing wibbly keeps wobbly. passing. Yeah, time keeps mm. going. But mm. uh, thanks for the question, Easy Target, and thank you also for giving me an opportunity to backdoor in Blizzard. Give us ships. Let us have a <laughs> ship. Let us have airships or something. Come Listen, on. they've already established that they exist in universe. So I mean, yeah, I, but I meant like boats. I just meant a boat or an airship. Like, you know, I don't care. I just want to, I want to ride. I just want a personal turtle that I can ride like of immense size. I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. I listen. I just want player housing. And if player housing happens to be a boat that I can customize, I'm good with that. If it's a house that I can customize, I'm good with that. If it's a house it's, that you can make fly and sail in the ocean. Yeah. 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 If it's a house I could put on the back of a turtle. Also good with that. Yeah. I, like I would accept many variations of this that give me my own little home base. That is yeah. mine. Having your own little home base can be good. It doesn't necessarily have to destroy your cities. There's ways around it. Just please come up with one, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like what? like putting houses on turtles. Yes, exactly. Uh, and Very then those horrible. turtles, the turtles have to be put on other turtles. And then when someone's <laughs> like, okay, but what's holding up the turtle? You can Another like, turtle. Ah, turtles all the way down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the achievement finally explained. I mean. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
again, if you have a question for our show, uh, please do send it to Blizzard Watch. Uh, podcast at blizzardwatch.com or use one of our two discord servers um, at this point I'm going to give Joe the puppy dog eyes and he's going to read the thing Blizzard Watch is possible gracias I mean I'm sorry Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash blizzard watch your continued support means this podcast signing community is able to thrive and grow Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast better chance at having your question answered on our podcast with a queue and an ads free site experience uh, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, Blizzard Watch, Vi Equidanian. Okay, no, that wasn't right. Um, I was trying to do French and I lost it. I guess that's you know basically that's it. Um, Liz, do you have anything you want to say? Because usually I just zoop out here and I you guys don't get the same. No, anything. I I I think I'm good. I think y'all covered it. All right. Uh, again, this has been the Blizzard Watch podcast. Thank you guys very much for being here with us. Um, we're going to be back next week. Yay. 